the wonderful Malira is here to talk relationship, yo. Let's get her right now. The Malira Green. Hi. I got Malira some Green. for Lyra. What's going on, boo? So you remember the six um, steps of love and remember that, right? Yes. I got a boo girl. I got a boo girl. Ooh. Yes. It worked. It worked. And, and he... He got a little coin. <laughs> you got a boo with a little coin. I'm here for that. Ah, uh, cause of you, either. girl. It worked. It worked. She ain't joking. She told me about it. And you on your way to LA? LA. I'm on my way to LA. Slide her down to LA and everything. This is real. This is real. I Love am super real. excited. Y'all have no idea. Mm -hmm. Like I'm. I'm just blessed to be able to do this every week. Straya, listen, I need you to call me when you get there so I can meet this boo to give him a little bit more skills and stuff to make it work. Um, That's right. And speaking of today, we're going to be jumping right into the topic, which is what relationship skills do people believe we need to work on? And I want to say thank you to everybody on my Facebook who has participated in this. So everything that I'm going to be giving you guys today is from people from Facebook. So most people said communication. But the one thing that really stood out was healthy communication. It's not just about saying what's on your mind, but I want to be intentional when I communicate with the other person who's listening to me to make sure that they are going to be receptive to it, that what I'm saying is being said in empathy. And not only do I know how to give communication, but I also know how to receive it which means sometimes we need to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. That's in the great book, the Bible, y'all. And what that really means is when somebody- Don't say that. Don't, don't say that. Don't say that that fast. That was real important. Say that again. Be quick to listen. Yes. Say that one more time. We want to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So when somebody is actually talking to you, you want to make sure that you are listening with an ear to actually hear what they are saying. That is what healthy communication is all about. Not only do I want to sit here and tell you my feelings, but I want you to know that I heard what you said. So there is this great set of communication skills that is done through the community reinforcement approach. They use it a lot with substance abuse individuals, but you can use it to really heal relationships. And the first thing they talk about in communication is number one, we want to listen to give an understanding statement. So when the person is talking to me in my relationship, I want to hear what you said and I'm going to give back to you what I heard you say. So before I even get in my feelings and take it personal, you're going to confirm for me if I heard you correctly or not. So what that can look like is if we're arguing because somebody didn't do the dishes. Let's just use that one. If you're telling me, hey, I was tired today. I meant to do it. I left it there. I'm going to give to you what I heard you say before I tell you how I even feel. So I'll say, hey, well, what I'm hearing you say is you had a busy day, so you didn't get to it. That is what we're looking at when it comes to healthy communication. Another skill that people brought up today was humility. Being able to humble myself in this relationship to know that this is not just about me. Every decision that I make is going to have someone else attached to it. I know we have this me, myself, and I mentality, and we do things independently, but every choice and decision that we make, there is other people attached to it, whether it is our spouse or significant other, it may be our children, it could be our family. Life is all about choices, and a good skill to have is how to make healthy and appropriate decisions and choices in order for your future to really be able to expand. Another great piece that some people brought up was understanding the spirit of being in control, really understanding your relationship. How much control do you have over certain things and being able to express that to your spouse, what your expectation of your level of control is going to be. Sometimes it's really difficult in relationships because your control mechanism can actually clash. What I think is best may not be what you think is best. So what we need to do is actually communicate about that so that we can continue to move forward and control the atmosphere of our relationship together. Not just one person's voice, but everybody's voice. We want to be able to acknowledge our personal and self challenges. So before we even get to like the relationship itself, I got to make sure that I've resolved my stuff. 
if I don't resolve my stuff, then the person I'm in a relationship with can not intentionally serve as a trigger to me. So now I'm treating them with disrespect because of what somebody else did and not them. I am treating them with a sense of frustration over something that they didn't really do, but somebody else. So we want to mm -hmm. make sure that we deal with our own stuff first. So then we're mm -hmm. not projecting our issues on that person that we love. So again, thank y'all to every person that really put wow. the time and effort to tell me what type of skills we need to work on. Because at the end of the day, the only way we can have healthy relationships is when us ourselves is healthy first, because that relationship is going to mirror to you what you don't like. So listen, don't get married if you don't like parts about yourself. Don't become a parent if you don't like parts about yourself. Why? Because that person is going to reflect to you the things that you need to work on, but you have to decide to start to heal. Wow. So so what question, what would be the question you would ask right now in conjunction with this? What thing can you, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah, so the thing that I would kind of like ask question wise is what parts of me do I need to change to make my relationship healthier? A lot of times when people talk about relationship advice, their whole thing is, well, this is what they did. How can I make them see my point of view? When sometimes it really is, what do I need to do to really hear what this person is trying to communicate to me? What do I need to do to see what is the disconnect between what they're saying and what I'm trying to say? So sometimes it's about what do I need to do to look different? So for example, with me and my husband, we are completely different people. I am a extrovert to a T. I'm going to show mm -hmm. up. I'm going to be bright and loud. I'm going to have big mm -hmm. earrings on, all of that. My husband, not too much. He's going to have on all black. He's going to stand <laughs> back, real cool and calm, collected. And at one point, it began to cause conflict because I am like, why don't you want to come and be this bright and loud person? And he's like, well, why don't you just quiet down just a little bit? But what <laughs> it did was they let me see on for me, I have to accept parts of me in order to accept the true authentic parts of him. Well, I am no longer trying to change who he is, but I am accepting of who he is because I've accepted who I am. And I can walk wow. in that and be unapologetically loud Malira. And let him be little quiet, Willie. And it works because now we get to accept each other for how we are. Wow, communication, man. That's that's everything. I know for me, I would need with Sonia, I would need to listen more. You know, I got so much stuff going on in my head and so much going on with me and her and our relationship and our growing together. And it's like it's like a hundred miles an hour, but it's all joy, it's all love. But sometimes I could listen more. Sometimes I could be just be quiet and pay attention because sometimes I'll respond to something she said without me having really listened to it clearly. So my response is wrong because I'm not responding to what she said. I'm responding to what I think she said, you know? Yeah. So so that's what that's the thing that I I'm gonna I can work on and will work on. Anyone who's uh in the chat, what can you work on? Let me ask uh Straya. What is something you know you could work on that would help make your relationship, especially with your new relationship, better? Well, listening. Um, one of my biggest problems with being a communicator and being a comedian is listening. Sometimes, you know, so what she said was profound because sometimes I don't listen and I need to listen more to get a better understanding for the relationship. So I agree with you. Listen, Malira, what you say works. It works. <laughs> That's what the people need to know. What you say works. And I'm a, I'm a true believer. I'm only going to get better and better and finer and finer. I am so hey. excited, man. That's that's great. And as you were talking about listening, because both of y'all said the same thing, a really good tool to use to do that mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. I want to listen to summarize what you said. I am no longer listening to solve the problem that you communicated. I'm no longer listening to provide you with a solution. I'm no longer listening to, to come back with a quick clap back. I am listening only for the purpose to summarize what you said. And then once you tell me yay or nay, based off of that, then I can go within and say, well, how did that make me feel now that I actually heard 
what you said and I get to respond from a realistic view and not yeah. from an emotional view. So if you listen with the purpose of summarizing, then mm -hmm. when you respond, you're going to respond from a true reality standpoint, and that will help you listen a whole lot better. Yeah, because oh, the clip for me, the little come little click back. Sometimes me just being spunky and me just being a you know a woman. Sometimes I'm quick, and sometimes it's it's you know it's not needed. It's not needed. So it worked, girl. <laughs> so listen to this. Angela says, "I just like." When you respond with a question instead of hearing what I'm asking, what do you want out of your relationship? And they say, what do you mean? Uh, hmm. What's so your response? To? Listen, that is an excellent question. I think sometimes we already have in our minds how we want that person to respond, that we don't take into account that other person's personal experience to the conversation. There are two individuals having a conversation, but there is two different completely experiences of that conversation. So sometimes we have to be OK when someone responds to a question with a question to try to get further mm -hmm. clarity, because, again, it goes back to if I'm listening to summarize and I missed your point. If I respond back to your answer, I need to know what angle you coming from. I need to know, like, what what is this question? Does this question mean that you feel like our relationship is not doing well? So at times we need to not be so um, reactionary to people's responses to our response, but then mm -hmm. understand that everybody process things differently. Again, I can only use me and my husband. I'm a very upfront person. So when I communicate, you're going to know how I feel, why I feel the way that I did, what my pinky toe was doing when I felt that way. Like, you're going to know all of it. He, on the other hand, is more of a, if I ask him a question, he needs a few moments to really sit back and think about his answer. In the past, mm -hmm. what that would do would make me want to come with a cop back. Like, so here we go again. I'm asking you a question. You won't know no answer. I am now getting to know how this person communicate in their style. So then I no longer have an expectation for them to go ahead and come back with a quick response. Sometimes people want to think about it because if I don't think about it, then I run the risk of saying something to you that I don't necessarily mean in that moment. Mm. And then now we have a whole nother problem because you asked the question and I gave you my raw feelings without thinking about it. So to that question, I would just suggest be OK with giving people that five minutes to reflect. Or sometimes it might just be, hey, that question you just asked, I don't really know the answer because I didn't think about it. Let me give some time to think about it. When we wow. begin to create conversations like that, then it'll become a whole lot healthier and we won't be so triggered if somebody respond back like, what do you mean by that question? They might really genuinely want to ask you so they can make sure they answer it correctly. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Can you really do that without them feeling like you're attacking? If you say, I'm sorry, what do you mean when you say that? Is, is it okay to do that? And then should they be able to go... Okay, this is what I mean, and break it down. Should they be? What do you mean? What do I mean? Because that's yeah. I've said that. But what do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> so we have to remember a lot of this stuff has started in childhood, in the sense of our parents are un unintentionally but natural dictators. Whatever they say mm. is what happens. So yeah. you're not supposed to question. When there is a certain level of authority or there is a certain level of respect, the expectation is you don't question it. So if I'm asking you a question, I want to answer. Not a what you mean, because we're not taught to explain ourselves. We're taught to you just do it and that's it. Right, right, so right. I teach people how to be OK with explaining yourself. I'm not just going to tell you no if I actually really love you. I'm going to tell you no, because why? Like we have to get in the mindset of we have to shift the dictatorship that we learn from our parents of do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> like do how I tell you all these things. We have to shift that. So it comes to a point of you redefining what is okay in your communication. I'm okay with my husband saying, I don't know how to respond to you right now. Give me a couple minutes. I'm okay with that now because I learned it's not about I need it right now from you. I can wait a moment because when you give it to me, it's going to come from a place of you being able to reach your intention of us having a healthy relationship. 
Wow. This has been a wonderful one this morning. I got so much information, so much out of this. Wait, I got to bring my team on because we got to applaud you as a team. Because uh-huh. this is amazing. I got information that certainly helps me. And Straya already said she's been using your information. And look, she manned up now. Cause yeah, I know. Channel, I'm man. Flower girl. I'm the number one flower girl. <laughs> I'm the number one flower girl. Oh, you got, listen, you got the flower girl. You got it, baby. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Wait, you want to get the flower? <laughs> <laughs> Malira, tell us where we can find you. You guys can find me at www.malaratransforms.com. I am Malira Transforms on Instagram. I'm the only Malira Green that is on Facebook. And as always, to the Coyer clan, I give my phone number because there is no reason for you to struggle in silence. And that is 757 757- 609-0694. And remember that you are not alone. We are all trying to learn and grow. So give yourself the opportunity to grow and learn. I love you, sister. Thank you. I love you too. Leave me with a woo woo woo. Woo woo woo. That's my Lyra Green, y'all, with relationship advice.